Hello everybody, welcome back to Stars of the Diamond. My name is Rhett, and today we're going to be doing another vintage card set feature. And uh, we're gonna go a little bit later than some of the sets that we've been doing recently that were uh, pre-World War II. Uh, these ones were produced from 1947 all the way to 1966. And these cards are called exhibit cards. Now, the reason they're called exhibit cards is because they were produced by a company called the Exhibit Supply Company out of Chicago, Illinois. And these cards were basically postcard size. So I have one kind of out right here. And uh, they were on thick stock. And uh, they're postcard size. So I have a 1957 Topps card, which is kind of when they began making cards in standard size. So you can kind of see the size difference between those cards. Now these cards were not produced with bubble gum. Instead, these cards were produced or initially um, issued in machines. And you would put a penny in, you'd turn the crank, and one of these cards would slide out. Now the Exhibit Supply Company began producing uh, baseball cards in 1921. And pretty much um, from 1921 all the way to 1966 produced a set of cards every single year. Now, the style and layout of the cards from 1947 to 1966 was pretty much uniform. So those sets all get kind of lumped in together. But they actually did produce a new set every single year. And um, there's a lot of variation in rarity with these cards because of that. Um, it provides us with a bit, the opportunity to... Um, find cards of really, really big stars of the day for a very, very affordable amount. But then conversely, there's some very, very minor players that are extremely, extremely rare. So what you can kind of see, obviously we're starting, I have mine out organized alphabetically. And uh, here's my Hank Aaron's. Now I have these kind of three, uh, mainly because you can kind of see the the size difference in the printed in USA. So the two on top have slightly smaller, this one's larger. Obviously these two are slightly different in color. So the reality is, is that these are three different Hank Aaron cards. Most people that collect this set kind of collect one of each particular player. Now each player can be found sometimes in variations. Now if the variation is kind of uh, major to the overall layout of the card, it's counted as sort of two cards within the checklist. Now the overall checklist of this set is, um, I think 250 something different cards or players with, with many variations. So 300 plus players. And at the end, there's actually some team cards as well. So we'll get into that. But as you can kind of see here, with Joe Adcock, they made him for the Milwaukee Braves in two different styles. One where his name is small and in script letters in the bottom corner, and the other is sort of a faux facsimile autograph on the front. So as we're kind of going through here, and again, some of the some of the bigger stars of the day are actually the most common cards in this set. So you can find cards of players like, for example, a Jackie Robinson. Um, from right about the time that he was, um, you know, breaking the color barrier in 1947, 48, 49, where his other cards, his Bowman cards, his, uh, his Leaf cards will absolutely just destroy your bank account. In this set, you can pick up a Jackie Robinson from his playing career for usually less than $100. So, as far as value goes, if you can get over the fact that they're not sort of standard size baseball cards, um, they may be some of the best values in the hobby. So a really, really fun set to collect, and I enjoy it a lot. Um, they did make quite a few errors and then corrected them. So we've got Richie Ashburn, uh, a couple different Richie Ashburns, and this one, you know, his name is misspelled, and, you know, then it's corrected up here. Luke Appling. Um, it's kind of a crazy set because you got guys that were, you know, playing in 1947, but then you have also new players like Ed Cranepool that, you know, started playing in the in the early 60s, and they're in the same set. So uh, interesting in that way. Uh, we got Ed Bailey here. 
We've got two different Ernie Banks, and I think overall in this set, I'm missing somewhere in the 25 to 30 cards total. It's not a set that I've necessarily gone crazy trying to complete, but as I have picked up cards here and there, I've always just kind of collected and saved the best copy that I was able to accumulate. So over time, I've kind of accumulated quite a few of them, and this is a pretty pretty hefty album. It's a, it's a heavy one. And uh, so we got a Yogi Berra up here. There, I think there's another variation of him where it's, his name is actually Larry Yogi Berra, and that's what would go in that space. Ken Boyer... And again, some, you know, guys, you know, we're getting into the 1960s here with uh, with Jackie Brandt. Some real legendary rarities in this set uh, revolve around the final year of production in 1966. And I can kind of go over some of those. I am still missing a few, but I have some of the bigger ones. Um, here is, for example, uh, a Roy Campanella. You know, really, really nice card of a Brooklyn Dodger. And, you know, we got Chico Carrasquel, you know, here for the Sox. And obviously he had changed teams, so they actually airbrushed out his jersey for it for the new team after he left the White Sox. We got uh, Orlando Cepeda here um, and uh, another version of him over here. We have Bob Serve with the Athletics. They've now airbrushed him, removed the both the logo on his hat and... The jersey so that makes that a separate card within the, the set itself and uh, here's a here's kind of a cool one you know pretty nice Roberto Clemente and uh, pretty nice card actually it's just a little bit of wear clean back this one has a price sticker that or a price tag on it apparently somebody paid three dollars and fifty cents for a Roberto Clemente that was a good deal whenever that happened Two different Joe Cunninghams, Guy Kurtwright. So he is a 1947 card. So this was the first year of production. And they they tend to be a little bit tougher. Now, a lot of the times you can have a person that was only produced in one single year, and those cards can, you know, take somebody that would otherwise not be a very expensive card and turn that into a very, very expensive card. For example, um, the Joe Cunningham batting. That card was, I believe, only made in 1961. So the Joe Cunningham with the White Sox here was produced over multiple, multiple years. This example, just 1961. So this might be a 5 to $10 card. Um, this one's, you know, typically a 25 to $50 card. And uh, kind of the same goes with the guy, Kurt Wright. Just an early example wasn't on that team for very long. This whole page is just Al Darks. So uh, we have uh, New York Giants, uh, Boston Braves, and Chicago Cubs. So I'm going to kind of start going through these a little bit quicker so we can kind of get through some. Larry Doby, there's a couple of him in there. Uh, Luke Easter, two different Don Drysdales. Whitey Ford, that's his tougher to find example that says Ed Whitey Ford and then on the other page we've got Whitey Ford and then the portrait which I believe is his hardest one to find so the portrait tends to have the more higher value there Augie Galan is another 1947 only card as we're going through there's there's also several Mickey Mantles I'm missing the best Mickey Mantle in the set and that's his portrait version that was only produced in 1966 but very affordable, again, you know, in relation to cards of the same players in your typical top set and things like that. There's an early Whitey Herzog, Gil Hodges, Kenny Hubbs down here, Fred Hutchinson, Jackie Jensen is a tougher one to find, Al Kaline. Got three separate Harmon Killebrews. Um, we've got 
Ralph Kiner, Ted Klazuski. We've got three different Ted Klazuskis you can kind of see here. So we've got a Ted Klazuski for the Cincinnati Reds. We then have a Ted Klazuski for the Pirates. And then as Ted Klazuski moved on, they removed the Pirates from his jersey and made this pretty ridiculous looking card where he looks like he's on a summer softball team. But uh, Sandy Koufax, he's a little bit of a tougher one. They really only added him into this set towards the end of the print run. So it tends to be a little bit harder to find, but certainly not rare by any stretch of the imagination. And with the Bob Lemon, they actually just kind of took the same picture. This is the tougher to find one where it zoomed out and then they zoomed in and kind of rotated him a bit. And that's his other card. Uh, Buddy Lewis is a little bit of an early one as well. Uh, they misspelled uh, Harry Lowry's name and then corrected it. So you got two different versions of him with two different spellings. But uh, that brings us over to the Mickey Mantle page. Kind of a sparse page. Um, his portrait and the the full-size batting pose would kind of go down here. Uh, there's the Roger Maris. But again, you have a, a mantle here. So I, I guess I have one of that same card in a PSA 6 holder as well, which would go right there. But this this mantle card can usually be picked up for, you know, maybe $100 for a con career contemporary Mickey Mantle that, that's in nice shape. So uh, Eddie Matthews, uh, two different Willie Mays. You can see this, this is early with the New York Giants here and later one with the San Francisco Giants. So again, I'm going to kind of skip through these a little bit quicker here. Uh, Mini Minoso, uh, two different Stan Musials. Uh, Don Newcomb, so uh, one with him kind of shaking hands here with the Brooklyn Dodgers, and then later they've removed the Dodgers logos from his jersey. And uh, kind of a cool one right here. I think that's, that's on this page. In 1948, you can see one of the first cards of uh, Satchel Page. And uh, probably one of the best values in the absolute hobby is this particular card. I mean, a 1948 Satchel Page card that can be picked up for usually less than a hundred dollars. So, um, it just, you, you can't beat that. I mean, this is a pretty nice example and I, I, there's no way that you would have to pay over a hundred dollars for that at its current value. Obviously a much, much later example. And again, as I said, the later they are, they tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, so this one right here, for example, the Boog Powell is sort of one of the uh, legendary rarities in this set and uh, this is a pretty pretty nice example of that card you know pretty sharp corners there if I was a graded card guy I'd probably get that graded it's just I couldn't imagine how much space this set would take up were it graded so it's probably not something I'll be doing anytime soon but Pee Wee Reese, this one is almost identical. The only difference is this one, you can see a little tiny bit of a baseball. This one, you can't. Robin Roberts, again, just a little bit of a typeset difference there. Bobby Richardson, that's another one that's just a really, really hard card to find. And uh, that was a 1960, uh, along with the, uh, the Boog Powell that we have back here. This Boog Powell and this Bobby Richardson are 1966 only cards. So cards that were only produced. I believe I have a Carl Yastrzemski as well. He's one of the big guys in that set. They um, were never produced prior to 1966 in that style. They produced them only in that year. That was the last year that they made these cards and it wasn't a very big print run. So, so tough to find. Uh, I believe Floyd Robinson's a 66 only card as well as were, I think, maybe Rich Rollins and a few others. Okay, so here's our Jackie Robinson. So this is a an early Jackie Robinson card. I mean, a legit 1947, 48, 49 Jackie Robinson. And, uh, you know, pretty decent card. And uh, you can still pick up this Jackie Robinson, I, I believe, for 100 bucks. 
$75 if it's not super nice. But, uh, I mean, there's no other Jackie Robinson card, especially given his historical significance, that even approaches that type of value, especially one from early in his career. So, um, just can't beat it, honestly. Continuing through, we got a Ron Santo, three different Carl Sawatskis. And again, this one is just very, very minor differences. On uh, here, we have, obviously, he's wearing a Braves jersey. Here, we have the uh, Milwaukee emblem. He went to the Phillies. They just kind of removed the Braves and put a P up there, and then he left the Phillies, and now they've taken away the P. So that actually makes that three separate cards. And I just looked. I, I believe I have, I'm missing 22 cards from this set. I have a few that are supposed to be in here, but they're graded. That's how I became. So they're not in here. Herb score. Two different from him. Uh, the, the moose scouring with his name is moose is, uh, is another one of the really, really tough cards to find. And again, if I have two of them, like you can kind of see here, they're, they're either a color difference or just a mild difference in some type set or something like that. I'm a, a stickler for, you know, the, the minor details. So I'll collect them in that way. Um, kind of cool here. You can kind of see Duke Snyder is, uh, with the Brooklyn Dodgers up here that's been altered to reflect the new Los Angeles Dodgers after they moved to LA in 1958. So a couple Warren Spawns. Stuffy Sternwise, Vern Stevens, Frank Thomas. And uh, this one's kind of interesting. This is Frank Thomas, uh, the original, not the, you know, not the guy from the White Sox. But uh, that's not Frank Thomas. That's, I believe, Bob Skinner being pictured there. And uh, so then they corrected it and actually put uh, Frank on his own card, which was nice of them. Bobby Thompson, Johnny Vandermeer. So here's a an early 1947 card next to a later 1960s card. So just a weird juxtaposition of seeing a guy that, you know, kind of ended his career in the late 1940s along with the guy that was, you know, kind of playing in the the mid-1960s. Mickey Vernon, Eddie Wakeus, the original. That's who, uh, look it up, he's the guy that the, the movie The Natural was kind of uh, designed after because a deranged fan had shot him and it took its toll on his career. Interesting read if you have some time. Herm Waymeyer, and I believe we're coming up on the Carl Yastrzemski. Uh, Maury Wills, Gene Woodling, again, just a typeset difference between those two cards. Billy Williams. And here's our Carl Yastrzemski, and this, I believe, is a pretty nice example of uh, of the Yaz. So, yeah, pretty pretty sharp corners there. A little bit of a ding up on the top here, but not too, too bad. But yeah, overall, really nice card. And as I said, that kind of brings us to Gus Zerniel, which obviously is the end of the alphabet. They also produce team cards. And uh, so from every year from 1948, I believe, all the way to 1956, uh, they produced the two teams that played in the World Series, with the exception of, for whatever reason, they did not make team cards from 1953. So we have... The 55 Dodgers and, you know, some of the legendary teams, uh, 1951 New York Yankees and, and things like that. So, you know, here's a, it's not necessarily the nicest example, but here's a 1951 uh, New York Yankees with the young Mickey Mantle on there. And uh, so just kind of a, kind of fun to see these, you know, teams. Yeah, just not, I don't know, I've never really necessarily gone after the teams. They're, they tend to be a little bit more expensive. Now, as far as kind of value goes on cards like this, they really, they run a, the gambit of, of price. So, you know, you can have a, for example, just kind of flip to this page randomly, a Pete Runnels. 
is uh, not a rare card. He's there with the Houston Colt 45s or, you know, you have a, a card of, let's find someone that's just, I know, uh, super common. Dave Philly. So we've got a Dave Philly here for the White Sox. That card in nice shape probably won't set you back more than five to ten dollars. So in an, a crease free, nice example, kind of on the low end of a Billy Pierce or a Dave Philly here, uh, less than ten bucks, five, six dollars probably typical. Um, if you get into somebody that's a little bit tougher, this is a harder to find player, Gary Peters here, just because of the year that it was produced. Uh, you might pay $25 for him. We talked a little bit as far as kind of the value of some of the bigger guys. Um, some of them, like uh, the Carl Yastrzemski that we kind of saw back here, you know, that's a that's a multiple $100 card for that Carl Yastrzemski. Uh, Boog Powell, uh, Moose Scourin, Bobby Richardson, some of those, you know, kind of rarity guys, a couple hundred dollars. Now, the, the most valuable card in this set is a portrait version of Mickey Mantle. It's a card I've had multiple opportunities to purchase it. It's just not necessarily the highest card on my want list. Uh, someday I'll probably pony up and get one. But that card can easily run about $1,000 or so, depending on the condition of it and what you want. Um, I, pro I kind of try to keep mine fairly nice, uh, pretty uniform in condition. Uh, I go from, you know, kind of an X to, to near mint range with these cards. Um, sometimes I, you know, I, I, I take what I can get and I'll upgrade later. Um, if you have some of these cards and would like to trade, um, I, I can kind of throw up in the comment section maybe the cards that I'm missing. I'd love to trade. I probably have a stack about that high of, of duplicates that I have, including some of the rarity guys that uh, I would not I would not mind at all finding new homes for those. I, I list them on eBay periodically and stuff like that, but you know, if, some, if I can help out a collector and get them a few cards that they need or something like that, and I can, you know, even pick up a card that I might need, then that would be awesome. You know, I love the community of, of card collectors. For the most part, you're good people and uh, we like to help each other out. So again, let me know if there's any cards in here that you're really looking for. I can certainly keep an eye out. I'm always buying collections and things like that. So um, if there's a particular card, let me know. But uh, that's kind of the set. Um, again, just a fun set to collect. It's kind of a lifetime set. And those are the sets that I enjoy the most. The ones that you know, take a little bit of time. You know, I don't know that I enjoy the sets where all it takes is just having a stack of money and you've got the set. You know, the ones that require a little bit of uh, diligence, uh, know how, you study them, you find out who the rarities are, you find out, you know, what you can get, constantly upgrading as you buy collections. Th those are the sets that for me are the most enjoyable. There's no right way or wrong way to collect cards, though. If you collect cards that are all PSA 10 and that's all you want, hey, if you enjoy it, all the power to you. Um, I'm a typically a raw card collector. Again, if I get cards that are graded, I'll keep them graded. I'll keep them in their tomb. But, you know, it's not something that I'm going to necessarily pay a ton of money extra to get. But then again, I've I've had to do that on occasion as well. So... There's nothing wrong with collecting graded cards. There's nothing wrong with collecting raw cards. Uh, do what makes you happy. That's, that's what collecting is all about. So thanks so much for coming to Stars of the Diamond. Um, I love these cards. Let me know in the comments below if you saw anything in there that you thought was just awesome. Um, if you have recollections of collecting this set originally or if you collect this set and you just want to talk about how awesome the set is or how much fun it is to collect, let me know, okay? I, I read the comments. I will respond. And uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, like our like my videos. And uh, get hit that notification bell as well. That way you know when we've placed new videos online. And uh, this is a community. We love our cards. And uh, talk about them, okay? The most... Making these videos has really kind of... Uh, re brought out a lot of new life in my collecting and it's been really fun and it's probably one of the more rewarding things that I've done in the last few years in the collecting world. Um, being able to kind of share my collection with other people, uh, 
you know, increase my knowledge, help others increase their knowledge. Just it's a it's a great time and a great fun. And there's no better hobby in the world than cards. But uh, thanks for coming and, and spending some time with me and looking at my set. And come back to Stars of the Diamond anytime. And uh, as always, happy collecting.